Innovators sees its fair share of creative and complex ideas, and today is no different. I recently sat down with innovator Yuichiro Minato to ask him about his work with quantum computers. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So tell us a little bit about the theme that you took on in the 2015 Innovation Program's Disruptive Challenge. How's it coming along now? I'm now providing a service to the world about the quantum computing and the machine learning uh, based on the challenges on the innovation program. So Minato-san is now providing services based on his challenge in the innovation program through his company, BlueCat. Though it seems that quantum computers are still in their beginning stages and aren't able to provide consistently accurate results. Removing noise or interference from these computers is the key to improving them. So tell us a little bit about what quantum computers look like now versus what they might look like in the future. The, the quantum computer is now, so we are now trying to make an actual quantum computer to working on the without noises because the, the quantum computer at the moment is uh, full of noise and we cannot get a um, good result at the moment and we are work, uh, trying to the next change. Uh, when you say noise, what do you mean by that? Uh, affect from the outside of the quantum computing machine. Basically, if we uh, to uh, calculate on the actual computer, now, uh, for example, for the, our Windows or Mac, and uh, we, basically we can get a very accurate result. But uh, the quantum comp computer is very difficult to create. So now it's, uh, it's not completed, so it's full of noise. So we cannot get a uh, uh, very accurate result. We get a very noisy result. That sounds like one of the biggest challenges with quantum computers. Yes. Hooking up quantum computers to the cloud allows for connections from all over the world, making it a truly global technology. Because the amount of quantum computers currently in existence is limited, there's a demand to increase their numbers, decrease their size, and simplify their use. So tell us about any development plans you might have for the future. Now we, are, we can use a quantum computer through the cloud system over the world because uh, Google and Amazon, they are providing the cloud, uh, quantum computer through their cloud system. So now we have a good environment and a good uh, opportunity to use the quantum computer uh, from our desktop or laptop computer to connect to their cloud system and uh, connect to the quantum computer in the United States. So we have a very good chance to educate or learn about the quantum computer. But actually, the number of the quantum computer in the world is not enough. So we, for example, sometimes we want to use the quantum computer at the moment. For example, uh, five hours or six hours. So we have to wait. So the next challenge is that we have to increase the number of the quantum computer itself. But actually the existing quantum computer is now is a very big machine in the laboratory and a very protected area. So the, the, to increasing the number of the quantum, com, quantum computer is very difficult at the moment. So what we have to do is to simplify the machine itself and to deliver the quantum computer to over the world so everyone can use easily, much more easy, easier than now. So to achieve this uh, uh, challenge, we are adopting a new technology to convert the existing CPU to the quantum computer. So basically the quantum computer is now they are using the very specific kind of technology, but actually that's what we are adopting is now to, to use a very normal CPU to convert it to the quantum computer. So doing that, so we can make the machine much more smaller, much more cheaper, and put it on the data center or at any, anyone who want to use the quantum computer. So now, next challenge for us is to make a very small quantum computer based on the existing semiconductor process. As Minato-san mentioned earlier, errors and noise prevent accurate results from being consistently obtained. So at the moment, he is looking at educating more people about quantum computers and how to use them, mainly through applications. 
So what do you think about the current business environment surrounding quantum computers? The existing quantum computer has a lot of errors and noise, so I think it's very difficult to use for the practical use at the moment. So instead, uh, to what we are focusing is uh, now for the education and for the human resources to educate people to use the quantum computer. So actually what we are doing now is um, what we are focusing is to import or export the quantum computing application from Japan or to Japan. Now, actually, we are now uh, doing the, some application with the Scotland and uh, France or India or Singapore or United States or Canada. So we have a lot of chance to communicate with uh, the companies uh, inside and outside the Japan and to make a platform for the quantum application. So I think it will be a good business for the quantum computer. You had mentioned applications on the App Store that utilize quantum computers. What specific kind of apps are there? At the moment, the quantum computing application is basically uh, the very professional one. So, for example, for the financial application or the material science application for, for a very specific kind of people is working on that uh, kind of application. And the application itself is uh, the combining the mathematics and the programming on the Python language. So basically, the application itself, it looks like a very uh, difficult textbook of the <laughs> with a lot of math mathematics and physics. So this kind of uh, application is very difficult to create and uh, produce. So basically, for example, for one uh, corporation or company uh, make this kind of application with uh, the budget of the 1 million yen, 10,000 million yen. So it's very expensive. So now we are focusing is to provide this kind of professional application for very cheap because uh, once we create and sell it to the customer, so they can get easily, uh, easily get it with a very low price. And we, they don't have to work by themselves. So this kind of professional application it has a very uh, large demand. So we are now selling this kind of application. So for the next step, what is required at the moment is that uh, this kind of difficult mathematics and difficult uh, programming uh, is uh, it takes a, a long time to learn and to acquire the skill. So. The next one is, uh, is so-called no-code or low-code application. It is uh, that the people can uh, run this kind of application only for the touch screen or the mouse to click. So it's a graphical one. So, so people don't have to learn about uh, Python programming or they don't have to learn about the mathematics. They just uh, push the button and uh, to learn the professional application. So this kind of no-code application is, has uh, also a very big, large demand. So we are now working on this kind of uh, graphic application. So it looks like in the near future, just about anybody might be able to use a quantum computer. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we already provided this kind of graphic application to our customer. So this is not a future. This is uh, now actually realized. So everybody can use the quantum computer more at the moment. Apps on the marketplace right now tend to be pricey and professional. The user interface also tends to be clunky and hard to read, especially for general users. Minato-san is currently implementing one-touch applications that allow for anyone to use quantum computers. What's something that you want more people to understand about quantum computers? What is the most important is the quantum computer is very difficult to make. So it's extremely difficult. So it takes a long time to achieve the, our the, the, the quantum computer. So, but actually, that at, uh, besides the people who already invest and did an investment on a quantum computer, they want to get the return from it. So this kind of short-term return and long-term vision is now conflicting 
So some people want to the quantum computer to get uh, profit from the computer at the moment. And besides, that most of the people want to develop the quantum computer with a very long term. So I think these kind of two kind of people uh, is uh, maybe they are both correct. So I just want to let people that on the computer is difficult, but actually there are some people who want to get return from the investment in the short term. So we have to protect both of the size of the people who want to working on the business. So it goes without saying that quantum computers are extremely difficult to use and understand, as well as time-consuming. Balancing the expectations of long-term results with short-term investments continues to be a hot topic. So what kind of impact do you think that quantum computers will have on our everyday lives? Uh, yes, the existing quantum computing application is uh, basically for professionals. So basically for the everyday life, we cannot get any profit from the quantum computer. But actually that recently the, from the research, there may be the power consumption and the, 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 the quantum computer can work on a very, very, very low energy. So it uh, improved the uh, energy consumption. So if we use a quantum computer, uh, for example, at the moment, we are living in a very data-driven uh, life. So, and the data is now increasing, but actually the problem about the computing with the heat and the power consumption is now becoming a social problem. So this kind of problem can be solved by the quantum computer to use a very, very low energy quantum computer. So for the everyday life, so we can get the profit from the quantum computer as the very familiar to the uh, Earth environment and the carbon free or this kind of uh, very specific topic for our everyday life. Although we might not see quantum computers as widespread as smartphones in the near future, their environmental impact and potential energy savings seems to make them promising contenders for the technology of tomorrow. To learn more about the latest and in innovative technology, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.